I'm a science fiction writer. I was trained as a mathematician and from 1972 until 2000 I taught uh, mathematics and computer science at San Diego State University. I think the, the, the future of this coming century is, is full of an enormous uh, uh, risks and, and, and uh, enormous potential payoffs uh, to such an extreme extent that uh, it's, it's, um, it's, very, it's very, very intimidating. To, uh, on the other hand, the fact that the possible payoffs are so great is, is also uh, very intriguing. What, what do we as humanity, I suppose, what do we have to look forward to? What, what good is to come? The good, the good that could come is uh, the attainment of, probably the attainment of any um, goal uh, or, or good that you can state in a concrete uh, way. There are some goals, for instance, that people have always wanted that to state them concretely no one has ever had to do before now, now that there is the possibility. And stating them concretely raises, uh, 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 raises questions that some people may not have thought about before. For instance, one of the most common things that um, I think everybody wishes for is to live forever. And uh, as long as that could be uh, set aside as sort of a a, 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 a faith about what happens after a person physically dies, uh, it, it, was a, it was an issue that sort of kept its distance and, and remained stable over time. But as we get into a situation where there is some possibility of talking about doing something like that, the question of what it would mean to live forever be, uh, 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 itself becomes a, a, a question that's very hard um, to, to, to answer. It's very hard to imagine um, what it would even mean to live longer than a million years, say, uh, without that being a form of living death. And in fact, that has been something that's been raised by um, uh, uh, people philosophically, is the notion that, well, we need death because basically uh, living periods of time like that would be meaningless. It's not meaningless, but it is actually so different that it raises fundamental questions about what the wish itself uh, means. What's going what's to make all this? Could you just move the light over to the right a little bit? We're getting a pretty good light. You're, so you're able to cut the slice and dice oh, yeah. this. We can oh, yeah. stop and, okay. Sorry. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, we'll make you look good. Um, What's going to make all this possible? What sort of advancements are going to happen? Um, the advancements in, in, in computers and in and related things like computer storage and speed uh, and in networking and then figuring out how to make this work uh, uh, together with people. Um, these are all upside things. I think we face very large downside risks and, and um, for instance the uh, uh, to me, uh, the, down, the risks that we face are, 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 are much greater as long as we're trapped on one planet. So in the middle of the 20th century, if you were to have a, a, a technophile conversation with a person, you would probably be getting a lot about how important space travel is. You, I'm not sure whether anybody in any of the interviews you've done here has mentioned space travel. Um, I think space travel is ultimately, not ultimately, but in the near term, um, may be a real determinant on whether, the, whether we manage with the good things. Because in our present situation, it's like we're six billion people who are locked in a closet. And uh, many of us don't like each other very much. And an unknown number of us uh, have knives and uh, machine guns, and some of them even have hand grenades. That is not a stable situation. Um, and although we have the potential for doing many wonderful things, when you're in a situation that is that dangerous and unstable, you, you could lose it all. You could blow it all up. And so uh, the initial promise of space travel from the mid-1950s and, and on actually is, it, it could well turn out to be a, a definitive issue on whether these other good things that uh, we're, 
that we're talking about here today, whether we're going to get a chance to go after them. So basically what you're saying is in order for us to grow and even to survive, we need to be able to sort of get out. In the, in the long run, uh, we are going to get out uh, if we survive. In the short run, it may turn out that getting out is essential in order to get us, in order to give us enough sur survivability to, make the, to be sure that the good things happen. As it is, we're in kind of a crapshoot situation. What is, you know, what is, what is going to uh, win? Uh, and it, so it, it just as a, as a safe, sooner or later, if we survive, it's going to happen. It would be real good from the standpoint of safety that, that if this could happen early on. How fast is all this going to happen? Ah, the, the good things, um, I, 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 I think, are on, on, on a, uh, within the next uh, uh, 30 years or so uh, could, could well happen. That's soon. Yeah. In other words, yeah, the, as I say, the near historical future, which itself is sort of scary. Uh, in the old days, uh, things like what I think a lot of your interviewees and what I am talking about, people thought they would happen, but, you know, maybe a million years from now, you know, when evolution has gone on and, some, and you know, we all have IQ of 400 and blah, blah, blah. When you look at it that far in the future, it's actually kind of comforting. It says, so the little things we're doing now will eventually give us something wonderful in the, in, the, in the future, way beyond our horizon. If you talk about it being in the next 30 years, which I think probably several of your interviewees, uh, is the time scale they're talking about, um, then you're talking about it's conceivably within your own lifespan. And then those magnitude of changes are actually kind of scary. That, that scares me. How does that yeah. happen? How, how are things advancing so fast? Oh, I think there's one fundamental thing that makes it plausible, and that is that um, uh, we've looked at technology in the past. Technology makes it fa possible to uh, move faster across the earth. It makes it possible for you to project your voice and your thoughts and your image all around the world faster. Makes it possible for us to make goods and, 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 and raise food. But the, the killer app that we're coming up on is that it looks very plausible that we will have computation and networking that is comparable to the power of, of, of the human mind. And that by itself is maybe not, maybe not profoundly scary uh, because we already have the ability to create um, uh, creatures with the power of a human mind. I mean, we do it every day. You know, it, it takes nine months or 15 years, depending on how you count it. Um, but what happens after technology gets that far, and there's no reason to believe if you believe if you believe it could get that far, there's no reason to believe that it couldn't get go further. What happens a, a year or ten years after you reach the crossover point? So at that point, you have uh, um, things that are actually of greater than human intelligence in every way that we think of human intelligence, uh, and. After that happens, you're, you're in, a, in a different sort of uh, progress area. It's not like progress in the past. In the past, you make a faster train, you make a faster plane. The people who made it and the people from before it, even if they're just the, you know, non-technical, they know what you did. They may not know exactly how you made it, how it but they know the consequences of what you did. They can see the consequences, at least, and they can understand the consequences. Once you get beyond the, the point where we are no longer the driving intellectual force behind progress, then we can't understand what's going on. And to me, uh, people can talk about, you know, progress is going faster and faster. How are we going to understand it? That's all true. But the reason, if it continues, the reason for it being able to continue to unintelligible uh, power is, is for the reason that, that I said. That if, if, if that doesn't happen, if there, if there are, are not greater than human uh, you know, drivers of progress, then I think things will level off. And actually, in some ways, some people would, are very, would be very comforted by that, you know, that eventually the progress would level off. It'd be intelligible. And the optimists would say, we'll take advantage of that to finally set things right in the world. I suspect that uh, that could happen. On the other hand, I suspect that the, the the, the threats that overall we face in the world at that point um, would also be, be beyond our uh, tackling and we'd be in very bad trouble. Yeah, if, if things keep escalating and 
computing power keeps increasing beyond the power of the human mind. What do we need to be afraid of? One interesting thing about the, about the hypothesis in that question is that uh, almost by definition, the, the answer has to be we don't know. It's sort of, it's sort of like a, uh, it's sort of like a, a uh, goldfish speculating about what, oh no, a, uh, a frog in a swamp speculating about what it has to worry about when the humans come. Think of all the things we do to swamps. Maybe they'll set it up as a wildlife preserve and things will be even nicer than they were before. Or maybe they'll decide to drain the swamp. I mean, those are questions that are over the horizon of the frog. So, um, and this, this is scary. Um, I actually think, you know, it, 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 it is something that um, in the long run of the development of life on Earth that things in some broad sense have, have uh, th there has been advancement. And I think this is part of that uh, ge generally beneficial, but this is almost getting, this gets, you know, essentially comes down to sort of a religious sort of, uh, you know, uh, faith that bad things will happen, but, but overall good things will happen. But the fundamental thing is it's beyond our horizon. The, uh, the physicist um, Freeman Dyson, and I can't get, give the exact quote, but he says that um, when thought goes beyond the human mental horizon, that perhaps is what uh, we, we should think of as being God. And the beings that I'm talking about, I'm not saying are godlike, but I'm just saying this is part of a, of a, of a process that actually theologians like Teilhard de Chardin in the 20th century, uh, in their own terminology, uh, discussed. And I am not trying to peddle it as a religion. I'm just saying we are talking very high stakes here. We're, we're talking about you know, fundamental issues of being and all the things that, that philosophers think are important. They're all coming together here. Should this be something we, we're, we should be encouraging or trying to slow down? I suspect that slowing it down is not something that can be done because um, there's an enormous amount of research that's not consciously being done in support of this. Only a very small amount of research is actually being done to try to make this happen. But um, there, are, there are so many things going on for economic reasons, um, for military reasons, even, even for artistic reasons that, uh, that support and push this trend that uh, trying to make it not happen, I would say, is if, if it can happen, it definitely will happen. It's not clear that it can happen. Is it inevitable? Uh, no, I don't think it is inevitable. I, I think that um, it's probably the most likely of the non-catastrophic things that could happen. Because you can make a list of terrible things that happen that, that aren't related to this. You know, general nuclear war, we get hit by a giant meteor. There's all sorts of uh, bad things. Global warming. Um, if you list all the bad things that can happen, I think some of those are very likely. Um, I think what we're talking about here is the, not certain, but it's the most likely of the non-catastrophic scenarios. Can we do anything to get ready? Um, I'm probably more pessimistic about that than most uh, people at this meeting. On the other hand, uh, as has been tossed back in my face when I start making pessimistic sounding noises, they say, well, um, there is a chance that we can do something in terms of planning, you know, not, not making, it probably doesn't make sense to try to say, oh, you can't do that type of research. Uh, we know what happens when you try to do bands like that. But it, it may be that uh, by thinking about it and planning, especially if it takes a number of years to happen, um, that, that we can make it more likely that, it, that uh, it does happen and or that it happens in a way that is benign. And so I think that meetings like this and, and generally thinking about the issue and, and, and trying to identify uh, safer, safer lines of advancement is, is actually uh, very, very important. There's a lot of very smart people at this conference talking about this issue. What, what does it mean for you know, the blue-collar worker or people that are living in impoverished countries? What, is, what does the future hold for them? Uh, I think very likely, f first of all, we are looking at a century of risks here. 
And even and distinguishing between blue collar and white collar is may, may give the white collar people a false sense of security. We are really all in this together and the and the and the various um, when a person looks at technology and its effect on people who say do not have a good education, uh, that, that in some cases that effect is, is, is immediately clear and negative. Almost all of that still applies to white collar people. And you can see that right now with, with issues like uh, white collar people who are worried about their jobs going away uh, because there are people that are just as smart and now just as well educated who are, are willing to do it for, for a lot less. So I think it's something that's faced by everyone there are terrible risks also that we face in terms of general physical catastrophes, global warming, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I don't, by blah, 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 I do not mean to deprecate it. I mean, these are, there's just a long list of very terrible things that could happen. Um, if we, if the, uh, the good technological issues that we're talking about actually do manifest themselves, then in a way, that, the way that impacts the blue collar people and poor people on, uh, in the world in general is a, a, a continuation of the, of the long, but, but now better and better improvements in, in, their, in their life. Just the spread of cell phone technology um, and what that has done to marketplaces in, 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 in poor areas of the world. Amazing improvement in the quality of life. So we are in a situation that uh, I, I, I like that it's a, well, I like the term positive sum game, you know, which is the idea of the, uh, you're gambling or you're playing a game, but the thing is, the amount of wealth in the game keeps increasing. So there are going to be people who lose and some people who maybe lose big time, but overall, it, you know, if you treat your partners right, everybody is, is doing better. And I think the history of the human race with, with vast <laughs> excursions in the negative direction, but has been one that has gotten better and better, and in a way, what we're seeing now is, is the acceleration of that process. And so, early part of this interview, we talked, actually said things that are, are, are very nervous-making and uneasy about changes this big, but in a way, this is the consequence of when things get very, very good, that um, you say, well, we're going to make everybody in the world, say, by the standards of uh, 200 years ago, rich. That's like living forever in terms of, I was talking earlier about you say you want certain things, you've got to think about what they mean. And the consequences of everybody on earth, say, being rich by 1900 standards, there are some amazing consequences to that. I think that's, and I think that is not, not for every single person because there's tragedy that strikes lives. But I think that we really are in a position for things like that to, um, to happen. Now, in addition to being rich, that also means powerful. You have that sort of money, you have power. You push it a little bit further and have even more power. This is again why it's a little bit bad to have everybody trapped in one place. I know you're probably not going to want to answer this question, but if you had to say now whether the future is going to be a good place or a bad place, what would you say? Uh, I, I, I think we have a good shot at it being a, a, a good place beyond our wildest dreams. What haven't we talked about that you think needs to be addressed? I should have been asked that question 10 minutes before I came in the room. Uh, yeah, I don't have any, actually, a good range of questions. I don't have anything that, that you know, pops up as, a, as an answer to that. Great. Well, thank you. Very okay, thank you.